Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 203, day number 203 in the series of basic math. Today we will have our third lesson in the series of 15 on the topic of Venn diagram. Problem as you can see is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? We are told that we have a group of 450 students. Out of those 450 students, we are told 250 study chemistry, 320 study mathematics. We are further told that at least 70 of these study, at least 70, 70 of these students, at least 70 of those students study neither chemistry nor mathematics. The question simply is, based on what we are told here, the number of students, the number of students who study both, the number of students who study both could be which one of these five ranges? We are given the five ranges here and our job is to locate a range which could represent the number of people who study both of these subjects. Let's get going, shall we? I'll give you five seconds right now. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to, for you to, be able to pause and unpause the video. I want you to pause the video, do the problem yourself first and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time. Okay, here we go. All right then, let's begin. We are told that at least 70, at least 70 is 30 neither. At least 70 is 30 neither. That's a very important bit of information. If at least 70 is 30 neither, what this, what this, what it, what this, what this implies in turn, what this implies in turn is that at most, the number of people who, that we can have who study, who study chemistry or mathematics or both, what's the most number of people that we can have, what's the most number of people who can, that we can have who study chemistry or mathematics or both of these subjects given the fact that 70 out of 450 is study neither of these two subjects. Well if four, out of 450, if 70 of them study neither, then 450 minus 70 which is 380 is the most highest number, that's the most that we can have of the number of people who happen to study either one of these two subjects or perhaps both of these subjects. Does it make sense? Because 70 is 30 neither, which means 380 is the most that we can have who study either mathematics or chemistry or perhaps both. That bit of information is very important here. Now we're going to make a use of now we're going to make use of that uh, that bit of information here. Here we are told. We, have, we are told that 250 is study chemistry, 250 is study chemistry. We are further told that 320, we are further told that 320 is study math. If we add them up, we get 70, we get 570. But we already know that the most that we can have, most that we can have of the number of people who study one of these two subjects or perhaps both of these subjects is only 380. Here we have 570. Why the discrepancy? Let's see what the difference is. If you subtract 380 from it, we get 190. What do you suppose this 190 represents? Why is this? Why do we have this overflow of 90? Why do we have this surplus of 190? These 190 people that we see at the end left over, it seems like there we have 190 people too many. It seems like we have 190 people too many. This is because these 190 people are the ones who are who are double counted. They are double counted because they are first, let's take a look at the Venn diagram before I continue speaking. Let's draw the Venn diagram so it's easier to see. So here is our Venn diagram, this is our universal set. We already know that 70 is 30 neither. So 70 are going to go outside here because they study neither mathematics nor chemistry. And here is our mathematics, here is our chemistry, which one is mentioned first? Chemistry is mentioned first. Let's put the chemistry here. Hmm. Not that it makes any difference but it's seems logical to go from le right or left to right. We know that 250 is study chemistry. We also told that 320 is study mathematics. Now what's going on here, the fact that we have 190 left over, this is our Q, this is our signal, this tells us that these 190 people, listen carefully, these 190 people are first counted as a group of these 250 people who study chemistry. And then the same 190 people are counted again 
as a group of people who study mathematics. They count it twice. They double count it. They double count it because they appear in the common area 190. 190. As soon as you put 190 there, you have to go back and adjust these figures. Because this 190 people are the group of the people who study chemistry. So now we have to take away 190 from it and this now we end up with 60. 60 tells us there are 60 people who study only chemistry. They study only chemistry, they do not study mathematics. Similarly, out of this 320, we have to take away 190 because this 190 people also happen to study chemistry. 320 minus 200, 320 minus 200 would have been 120, so it's going to be 130. There are 130 people who study only mathematics, they don't study chemistry. And there are 190 who study both. We are not interested in this part. The question is asking the number of students who study both could be which of these. We know 190 is the starting point. This is, this is the least number of people that we can have who are studying both subjects. The range has to start with 190. Well, that's a, that's a good bit of information here. That's a very good bit of information because even though we have done only half the work, we already know that the answer cannot be 70, 90 or 130. It has to be either, either D or E. It has to be either D or E. Now we have to do the second half of the work. And if you do not know how to do the second half of the work during the real exam, if you're taking the real exam and if you do not know how, where to go next with it, or perhaps you don't have the time to finish the rest of it, that's okay. You have a 50-50 chance. Just pick one answer choice and move on. Don't fret. Do you understand? Don't fret. Don't, 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 don't get agitated. Don't waste your time. Don't get worked up. 50-50 chance on a problem that you did not know how to finish or perhaps on a problem that you did not have time to finish is a bloody good odds. Do you understand? Let's, let's, let's finish up here. I'm going to put them next to each other so that we have a nice checked up position so that we can, we can compare them very easily. Here's the next Venn diagram. Now, this 70 that you see there, the number of people who study neither, the number of people who study neither will have to, de will have, will depend on how many we put in here. How many people study, how many people who study both subjects. So let's start again. There is our chemistry. Here is our mathematics. Here is our mathematics. This is 250. And this is 100, 200, 320. Okay, watch what happens. We put 190 here because 190 are how many are double counted. But is this, is, this, is this the most that we can have in here? Is this the highest number that we can put in the common, common element? People who study both? Can we put 320 here? No, we cannot put 320 here. That's not. The, we cannot put it here because if we put 320 here, we don't. We can't subtract 320 from here. It has to be 250. We can put 250 here. We can put 250 from here. 250 people study both. Now watch what happens. This is the most we can have. This is the highest number of people that we can have who study both. And if 250 people were to study both, then what we are saying is that what we are saying in essence is that. There are 250 people who study chemistry, and everybody who studies chemistry, everyone who studies chemistry, also happens to study mathematics. In other words, there, are nobody, there, is, nobody, there is nobody who studies only chemistry. Anybody who takes chemistry also takes mathematics. Now we have to go, go to this number and subtract 250 from here. And we'll end up at 70. We're not quite done yet. As far as the question is done, as far as the question is concerned, we're done. The range goes from here is your range. The number of the range for the number of people who study both is from 190 to 250. 190 to 250. This is our answer. This is wrong. 320 is this part here, but, but we cannot put 320 here because we cannot subtract 320 from this number. As far as the question is concerned, we are done, but, but we're going to finish up the problem very quickly by figuring out how many people study neither. How many people study neither will have to depend on these figures. 350 plus 70 is 320. Three, uh, 250 rather, 250 plus 70 is 320, but the total we have is 450. 450 minus 320, 450 minus 320 is 130, that's worth here. In other words, the, the highest number of people that we can have who happen to study neither of these two subjects is 130. So the first answer that you see there from 70 to 130 was actually the range for the number of people who study neither. The range of number of people who study neither of these subjects is from 70 to 130. The range for the number of people who study both subjects is 190 to 250. The answer is D. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.